Thank you for the introduction. Today I'm going to talk about an adolescent girl-led participatory action research project and share lessons from a sport-based cluster randomized trial in Cape Town, South Africa. There is extensive evidence that adolescent girls and young women are particularly at risk for HIV, STIs, and unintended pregnancy. There's also evidence that spending additional years in secondary school is protective and reduces the risk of HIV infection. There's also evidence that comprehensive sexuality of programs that address gender and power are five times more likely to achieve SRH outcomes. However, integration of CSE programs at school is suboptimal and delivery mechanisms need to be optimized. Therefore, our study explored two different platforms. One was classroom-based, in-school, and teacher-led, and the other added a supplementary component after school, which was led by a near peer facilitator. It was interactive and sport-based. Our study design was a cluster randomized trial in 40 secondary schools, engaging female learners aged 14 to 17. We had three study objectives. The first looked at the impact of the integrated program on HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and pregnancy. The second looked at the impact on school absenteeism. And the third evaluated the acceptability and the feasibility of the integrated program. The third objective we'll focus on today. We used a number of traditional and non-traditional qualitative study methods to evaluate acceptability and feasibility. These study methods included multiple stakeholders in the program. Today, we'll focus on the adolescent participants and on participatory workshops that were led by their peers. These workshops included focus group discussions, a dream program activity, peer interviews, and activities to assess girls' interest in different SRH topics. So what are YPAR methods? Uh, YPAR is Youth-Led Participatory Action Research, and it's an innovative approach to positive youth development, which trains adolescents to take on an active role in research. And it's important because it disrupts the typical power dynamic that exists between a researcher and a subject. And it's also important because it emphasizes youth adult power sharing. We use these methods uh, to complement our traditional methods. And we aimed to elicit more authentic data and channel youth voices in the creation of recommendations and solutions and to inform future programs and research. We also wanted to recognize the important expert role that adolescents can play in research and programming. Our YPAR project followed six steps. The first was selecting youth investigators. The sec second was training youth investigators. The third was co-developing and testing tools. The fourth was youth-led data collection. The fifth step was debriefing and collaborative coding. And the sixth was to summarize key findings for dissemination. In a little bit more detail, the first phase was selecting youth investigators. Teachers from intervention and control schools selected two to three investigators from each school. And they were guided by a few criteria, engagement in the program, good communication and leadership skills, uh, curiosity and an interest in building further skills. The second step was training the YIs. There were basic research skills that were covered such as research ethics, facilitation skills, identifying key themes, and also taking process notes to document the process of being a youth investigator. The YIs also refined important research questions, such as what factors influenced whether girls in the program got pregnant or an STI, um, how girls felt about the program, and what really important aspects they would recommend for future SRH programs. The third phase was co-development and testing of tools. The YIs worked on data collection tools, and then they tested them on each other. This process resulted in some very important changes to the method. The fourth stage was youth-led data collection. After the, the YIs were trained, they conducted workshops in pairs and they were supported by research assistants who were graduate students. These workshops included focus group discussions where they explored aspects of the program, uh, relationships, friendships. They also created a collage about what their dream program would look like for girls. They conducted interviews with their peers and they conducted a topic sorting activity where they prioritize sexual health topics and they completed time wheels. The, sec the fifth phase was group debrief and collaborative coding. The, particip the participants uh, did two workshops where they debriefed on the data collection process and they collaboratively analyzed the data where they read through transcripts uh, and also looked at images from the collages. They discussed what they felt were the most meaningful excerpts and they constructed themes around uh, the transcriptions. 
And then the last phase was summarizing findings for dissemination. They summarized their findings uh, by stakeholders, so who they would like to share this, this information with, um, peers, teachers, principals, and they talked about what the most important findings were, what it meant to be a YI, and what they learned. Some of the important themes from their findings were that peer pressure was a dominant theme, influenced influencing girls' perceptions of healthy and unhealthy relationships and the importance of schooling. For example, one of them said, first, you must focus on your books because boys bring babies. Secondly, there was a strong desire for comprehensive sexuality education in school-based health services. So the program was very acceptable. However, they saw teachers' fears of having direct conversations about sexuality as a barrier to effective and open communication. And finally, they shared lots of creative ideas um, to inform the design of future programs. Uh, adult study analysts also looked at the data and found similar similar findings. Um, the program was highly acceptable. In, in addition, um, they found that participants valued the safe space uh, that mentors created in the program and that girls talked about being very uncomfortable in the teacher-led program. And they felt that some crucial information was being concealed, especially around uh, consent and negotiating safer sex. Finally, our lessons and next steps. Inviting adolescents to participate actively in the data collection process was feasible. Our youth investigators mostly participated in the full process, including training, collection, uh, and, and summary for dissemination. And they also found that the training methods, training and methods were acceptable. They described the process as empowering. However, we recommend taking more time to conduct training. Qualitative methods do require probing, uh, and this was something that the YIs were not very comfortable with. And we also recommend including YIs from inception uh, to really refine uh, research questions at length. Um, our next steps are to integrate uh, YPAR data with other study data and uh, to engage YIs meaningfully in the dissemination process. So our recommendations um, are to employ non-traditional methods as they do elicit more authentic data. And we think these are feasible and acceptable approaches to take and that they generate rich actionable data for adolescent informed solutions. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge all of the investigators and all of the participants as well as our funders.